It may not be the best conference, but it's a whole lot better than it used to be, and it might be the most fun, and it's probably the most competitive, especially at the top. Welcome to Pac-12 Power Rankings right here at the Voice of College Football. Please like the video, share the videos out on social media. Not everyone knows, believe it or not, not everyone knows that we're here talking college football at the Voice of College Football each and every day with you. Let's get to the Pac-12 Power Rankings, and the top five are almost impossible to distinguish, but we will do our best. Let's go to the bottom at number 12, and the worst team in the Power Five, not just the Pac-12, is Colorado. And Vanderbilt made this official last weekend with a win over Kentucky. So up until last weekend, Colorado at least had a win in the Power Five against hapless Cal. So we would have to consider Vandy to be the worst in the Power Five, but... Fandy took care of that with a win over Kentucky. So Colorado at 1-9, in 1-6 in, in conference play. Lost to Arizona State over the weekend. They gave up 557 yards of total offense. And Colorado's got a date coming up against the University of Washington, one of the hot teams out west. At number 11, we go to the aforementioned Golden Bears of Cal. They did give USC a run a couple weeks ago. And took that game deep into the fourth quarter at 41 to 36. But Cal still losing a lot of football games under Justin Wilcox. Three and seven overall, one and six in conference play. They were competitive, as we mentioned, against not only USC, but against Notre Dame. Hail Mary almost grasped to send that game in South Bend to overtime, but they didn't get it done. They have, again, lost to Colorado. So that's the black mark against the Golden Bears. They take on Stanford in. The big game coming up this Saturday. At number 10, the aforementioned Cardinal of Stanford. What's going on with David Shaw and his program? This was an elite program 10 years ago under Jim Harbaugh, then handed off to David Shaw, and he kept it up for quite a few years, most notably and most recently under Christian McCaffrey and that 2015 Rose Bowl championship team. And since then, just worse and worse and worse and worse. And the last four seasons have been dismal. At Stanford, they're 1-7 in conference play. Their number one running back, Casey Filkins, averages less than four yards per carry. That's awful in college football. Tanner McKee, 12 touchdowns, seven picks. NFL scouts love him, but he's not producing at the uh, collegiate level, 59%. That's mainly because of the offensive line and the lack of skill around him. Stanford's last three losses by 25, 38, and 35 points, but of course... They do have a sterling win against Notre Dame on the road in South Bend. Stanford takes on Cal in the 40th anniversary of the band is on the field. Stanford and Cal. Now we go on to number nine in the Pac-12 and to Arizona State coming in at three and seven. They've got two wins in the Pac-12. They lost to Washington State over the weekend. Quarterback Trenton Bourget having a fine season. Eight touchdowns, four picks since he stepped in for Emory Jones, completing almost 72% of his passes. And Arizona State's got a date against Oregon State coming up this Saturday. All right, up to number eight, and a team that eighth ranked in the Pac-12. The record's not good at four and six. However, Arizona taking tremendous strides under Jed Fish. Of course, they were deplorable at the end of Rich Rod's tenure and then throughout the entire Kevin Sumlin debacle. Arizona finally won a game, of course, in conference play last year after a zillion consecutive losses, something like 19 or 20. Again, 4-6 and six this year and coming off that enormous win at the Rose Bowl against UCLA, knocking them out of national playoff consideration. Jaden Delora was 23 of 28 in that ball game against the Bruins, 315 yards and two touchdowns. Arizona takes on Washington State. That should be quite a, an affair coming up in Tucson this weekend. At number seven in the Pac-12, a good Washington State team. Of course, Jake Dicker took over a difficult situation from Nick Rolovich, and he made the best of it in 2021, carries it into 22. Six and four, they've reached the bowl eligibility status. Three and four in the Pac-12. Cam Ward's got 20 touchdowns and eight interceptions. Their most notable effort this year, Washington State, was taking Oregon to the brink. They easily could have won that game. They turned it over late. Cam Ward with a pick six, 44-41. Really good effort by the Cougars there. They go to Arizona trying to get their seventh win on Saturday. At number six in the Pac-12, and we're starting to raise the bar here with Oregon State. Oregon State with three losses at 7-3, and three, and of course they've got 
Arizona State, and then Civil War territory against the Ducks of Oregon. They're 4-3 and three in the Pac-12. They have lost to USC and Washington close, close, close. Great game a couple Friday nights ago against the Huskies in Seattle. Almost pulled that game out. Lost it late. Only real bad showing by the Beavers this year against Utah, losing 42-16, a game in which their starting quarterback, Chance Nolan, was lost and replaced by Ben Gobrinson. Now Gobrinson is the starter, and he's playing well. Two touchdowns, no picks, his last outing. All right, to the top five. And you know what? We could place these in any order, and I could justify any of the spots for any of the teams, one through five. But at number five, we've got the Huskies of Washington coming off a monumental win against Oregon, of course, 37-34 at Austin Stadium. Michael Penix was lights out with 408 yards passing, two touchdowns. This team, though, lost to Arizona State. Keep that in mind. Five and two in the Pac-12. They've got Colorado coming up. Then, of course, the Apple Cup game against Washington State. So the Huskies going to be favored to finish a lofty 10 and two and seven and two in conference play. But again, the bad loss against Arizona State in particular. The Huskies also lost to the UCLA Bruins and pretty much controlled in that game at the Rose Bowl. We move on to number four and the Utes of Utah, the defending Pac-12 champions, and still in the running. Six and one in conference play, of course. Way, way back, they lost to Florida on the road in Gainesville. Their conference loss against UCLA at the Rose Bowl. In the past couple weeks, they've defeated Arizona by 25. They defeated Stanford by 35. We mentioned the Oregon State win by 26. Cam Rising, 19 touchdowns and four interceptions. Tavian Thomas not having quite the year that he had um, last season. Maybe some personal issues there that we understand and Utah again, 8-2 and two overall, and they tagged at USC with the loss, of course, at Rika Eccles 43-42 on a two-point conversion at the gun. Utah goes to Oregon. What a game that should be, and a monumental game in the race for the Pac-12 championship game appearance. Number three in the Pac-12, coming off a rough, rough loss against Arizona, but still at number three, UCLA. Bruins 8-2, and 5-2 and two in Pac-12 play. They have actually played the best against the top five teams in the conference with a win against Utah by 10 points, a game they controlled, a strong showing against Washington. They won that game by eight, but Washington had to storm back to make it close, but they really had it won in the third quarter and then the 15-point loss against Oregon. DTR having a fine season, 20 touchdowns and four picks. Zach Charbonnet, what a year after a 181-yard game against Arizona, so don't blame him for the loss. 7.5 yards per carry in, 13 touchdowns for Charbonnet. Again, they lost to Arizona to really drop them out of the race for a college football playoff appearance, but they're still in the running for a Pac-12 championship game, and they've got the annual showdown and um, the battle for the City of Angels against USC on Saturday. Now to the top two positions, and we go to number two. The previous number one, Oregon, losing to Washington. And this has really cost them, of course. Oregon could have made a college football playoff, but now they're out of it. Eight and two overall, six and one, had won all those consecutive games after the Georgia loss early. This is the most complete team in the Pac-12, and I actually believe they are probably the best team in the Pac-12. Would love to see them play USC. Bo Nix at quarterback, outstanding season. Troy Franklin, uh, five catches for a buck 39 in the loss against the Huskies. The defense sometimes looks exceptional, like one of the best in the nation, led by Noah Sewell and Bennett Williams. Again, they lost to Washington, and that ruined their hopes of a college football playoff. But hope springs eternal for the Pac-12 championship as they take on Utah coming up on Saturday. And finally, in the number one position, USC. Even though in some respects... They have the worst showing against the top five teams in the conference with just one game played. They have not defeated anybody else in this top five ranking. And they've got the loss against Utah, 43-42. But USC's got the best loss. And they also are 9-1 right now, 7-1 in the conference. Caleb Williams, outstanding, 31 touchdowns, two picks. They have weapons all over the place, of course. Travis Dye, however... Their number one running back with nine touchdowns is out now for the rest of the season. Hurt against Colorado. The defense started strong, played above its head, 
And then Eric Gentry, that injury to him has really hurt the defense along with some other injuries on that side of the ball. Again, the loss to Utah, the only mark against the Trojans, who are now 9-1, and taking on UCLA at the Rose Bowl coming up on Saturday. What a day it should be, USC, UCLA, Oregon, Utah will tell us who will play in the Pac-12 championship game with one more week to play, but the Trojans out of conference against Notre Dame on that final weekend of November. Our Pac-12 rankings right here at the Voice of College Football. Leave your comments below, and we will see you, most notably, you Pac-12 fans. Our USC show is Monday night at 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific on our USC channel right here at the Voice of College Football.